and welcome to another episode of GGSP. I'm Jem. Coming up on today's show... We flex our superhero muscles in DC Superhero Girls Teen Power. We're still not done yet! Plus, to celebrate International Day of the Girl, we discover the amazing women behind some of your favourite games. And that Ask SP box isn't going to answer itself. So stick around to see us try and solve some of your gaming dilemmas. OK, let's get to it. GGS peeps, let me tell you what I've been playing this week. The mysterious open world exploration game, Sable. This is such a beautiful game. The art style reminds me of a cool indie comic book or something. I loved the mix of mystical ancient temples and sci-fi tech, most specifically hover bikes. But for all its eye candy, Sable still feels a little underpolished. Movement was kind of unresponsive, and the camera was constantly clipping through walls and things. Which was absolutely not at all the fault of my driving, mind you. Your character also has super chunky animations, which is an intentional style choice, but I found it a bit queasy on the eyes. Plus, I also found this bug, which was actually pretty funny. I am intrigued by all the strange big heads. I mean, who wouldn't be? But I'm not sure it's enough to pull me back in to uncover all of Sable's mysteries. Now, moving on to some sweet gaming news, let's recap all that we saw at the latest Nintendo Direct. A bunch of exciting new games were announced, including a new Kirby game called Kirby and the Forgotten Land, a 3D platformer set in a delightful post-apocalyptic world and Chocobo GP, which looks like the Square Enix version of Mario Kart. Plus, Switch Online will receive a huge expansion pack with games from the classic Nintendo 64 and Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive as we know it in Australia. Plus, there's even some controllers too. But it looks like it will be a new membership plan that users will have to pay extra for, so double check with your grown-ups if you're keen on it. For all you Animal Crossing fans watching, Nintendo also announced an update for November that includes fan-favourite character Brewster and his cafe, The Roost. And finally, the Mario movie has a release date and a star-studded cast, with Chris Pratt, best known as Star-Lord from Guardians of the Galaxy, as the voice of Mario. But look, I just want to know if Waluigi is going to be in the movie. I mean, I could voice him. Uh, but moving on, Mojang has revealed the famous voice actors behind its goat mobs. Each month, Mojang's online web series, Secrets of Minecraft, gives fans exclusive behind-the-scenes content. This month's app focused on the Caves and Cliffs update. The show's hosts, Narrator and Marilla, revealed that the Mojang team used a mix of real goat noises and human voices. <laughs> However, it was mostly and truly inspired by videos of goat screaming that went viral almost 10 years ago. <laughs> Whatever floats your goat, Mojang. And lastly, streaming for a good cause is the best kind of streaming. All of next month, the Sydney Children's Hospital is inviting players of all ages and genres to join their stream team and help sick kids return home to their families faster. Even if you're not a gamer, there's a chance for everybody to bust a move or cook up a feast. Basically anything, as long as it's a live stream. The Sydney Children's Hospital is hoping to raise funds for hospital equipment and services, but also lift the spirits of children and their families. That sounds like an excellent stream time to me. Anyway, let's wrap the news and check out the review. That rhymes. DC Superhero Girls Teen Power is an action adventure game for the Nintendo Switch based on the DC Superhero Girls cartoon. We're here for you, Batgirl. Brace yourself, Harley. Where are heroes Batgirl, Supergirl, Wonder Woman, Zatanna, Green Lantern, and Bumblebee are not only crime-fighting commandos, but high school students at Metropolis High School. And if you're thinking, wow, that must be exhausting, how are you meant to sleep in between homework and villain throwdowns? Well, don't worry, the villains are in the same boat. Which I think really changes the question to, how bad do you have to be at your job to not realize you're in the same building as your sworn enemies for six hours a day? What's wrong? You seem down. I am. 
Yesterday, I really wanted something, but someone got in my way. As you wander around Metropolis's different districts, helping local citizens, saving cats, <laughs> and taking photos on the social media giant Superstar, you'll be thrown into many a heated battle against all manner of villainous foes sent by Toy Man. These include creepy baby dolls, creepy teddy bears, and regular nutcracker soldiers, who are just super creepy in their own right. In combat, each character has their basic attacks, plus a few special moves that charge up over the course of battle. Wonder Woman can lasso her enemies to get up close and personal. Batgirl can throw a barrage of batarangs to knock down multiple foes. And Supergirl can freeze them in place with an icy chill. Dodging attacks at the right moment also grants you some extra damage, and chaining together attacks can earn you rewards at the end of battle, which go into leveling up your abilities. So there's incentive to improve and experiment. I was a bit disappointed though that you can't switch between the playable characters in battle. You're just stuck with the one you select while the other two act as support, which feels like a missed opportunity to flex those cool abilities. There's a few strange choices made outside of the combat too that I didn't really vibe with. Alongside the toy maker shenanigans, there's also a storyline about a totally innocent, not at all evil looking, Lex Luthor trying to rebuild the rundown Bay Area. Every few side quests, you'll unlock a new building you can put down in a spot that the game tells you to. It does eventually make sense story-wise, but I still felt it was a pretty lackluster addition that seemed more like a way to pad out the game. On the other hand, I did really enjoy running around and taking photos, curating my superstar feed and hunting for that next trending pick. That's a good example of world building and it encourages you to explore this city you're supposed to care about enough to protect. Plus, I liked the little funny moments you can only spot while using the camera. I think my favorite parts though were the little character interactions we got between our heroes and villains. My show is just starting too. Wanna watch? <laughs> but those big fights are so few and far between in amongst the waves of samey filler battles. As enjoyable as the combat is, it can feel like you're just going through the motions when you're facing off against the same couple of enemies. At the end of the day, I think Teen Power has all the working parts of a really fun beat-em-up brawler, but it lacks the fine tuning that would make it a great one. If you're a fan of the TV show, you might get more out of this than I did, but apart from the photo mode and exploration sections, I can't say I'd recommend this to people looking for the superhero experience. I'm giving DC Superhero Girls Teen Power two and a half out of five rubber chickens. What better way to celebrate the upcoming International Day of the Girl than by shining a spotlight on some of the awesome women in the video games industry? Almost half of all gamers are women and girls, and that number just keeps growing as the industry grows, meaning that more women are creating and playing games. How cool is that? And our first trailblazing woman started her career right at the very beginning of gaming. The fun is back! Oh yes, Siri, it's the 2600 from Atari. Do you remember the Atari 2600 console? Yeah, neither do I. But it was one of the most popular home consoles in the late 70s and early 80s. It housed iconic games such as Pac-Man and Asteroids and was seen as the granddaddy of retro gaming. It's the 2600 from Atari. Enter Carol Shaw, the first ever woman game designer and programmer. Carol was born in 1955 in California and quickly developed an affinity for computers and maths during high school. She first worked at Atari, where she developed several games for the 2600, including Polo, 3D Tic-Tac-Toe, and Video Checkers. In fact, she became the go-to programmer. Carol eventually left Atari and joined Activision, where she developed her first solo game, River Raid, which quickly became one of the most popular and best-selling games on the Atari 2600. Carol is often regarded as the first step in opening pathways for future women video game developers. What a legacy! Our next iconic woman in gaming is Siobhan Reddy, studio director of Media Molecule. Siobhan was born in South Africa, but spent the majority of her childhood growing up in Australia. 
Though her hobbies weren't focused on gaming, she thrived on imagination and immersed herself in dress-ups, reading and theatre. But the pull of video games was too strong. Siobhan scored her first job in the industry in the UK at only 18 years old. Since then, she's become the studio director of Medium Molecule, who are responsible for the popular PlayStation games Little Big Planet, Tearaway Unfolded, and Dreams. Earlier this year, she was awarded the BAFTA Fellowship Award, recognizing her massive contribution to bringing diversity to the industry. Technology and creativity are for all of us. This industry is somewhere that should be attractive and open to all who have an interest. And for our final highlight, we're keeping it in the land down under with video game producer Lisey Kane. Lisey is a producer at Melbourne game studio League of Geeks. She joined League of Geeks in 2014 and was the first girl to be hired for the team. Since then, she's been the lead producer on the studio's successful digital role-playing board game, Armello. Lisey also co-founded Girl Geek Academy, a global initiative that encourages and teaches STEM learning for women and girls in games. This has helped create communities and provide opportunities for upcoming girl game creators. Of course, there are so many more amazing women making games, and one day you could be one of them too. So go on, start designing, writing, programming. Wow, there really is a lot that goes into making a game, huh? You're all so smart. Happy International Day of the Girl. Okay, now it's time for Ask SP. I need to find my answering hat. Let's keep the International Day of the Girl party going with some Ask SP questions from some of our great girl GGS peeps, starting with this one from Alison. Good morning, afternoon or evening, GGS peeps. I have a couple of questions for you. Um, do you know if Slime Mantras is on Nintendo Switch? Um, and who are your favourite characters in both of the routes in Undertale? Thanks, Alison, and good morning, afternoon, and or evening to you too. Wait, not and, just or. Anyway, to answer your first question about Slime Rancher on Switch, yes. The very aptly titled Plautable Edition of Slime Rancher came to Switch in August, and we hear there's a Slime Rancher sequel due to come out sometime next year. So hopefully that will also be available for Switch at some point too. As for favourite Undertale characters, well, no matter what route you're taking, I like Undyne. She has a cool sword and I think she's pretty awesome. As well as the iconic skeleton brothers Papyrus and Sans. I like their humour. Moving right along now to another question, this one comes from Rosa. Hi DGSP, what is a game that you recommend for mobile? P.S. Darren Doodles. Oh, certainly! <laughs> uh oh no! Caput! Soundwave! Thanks, Rosa! If you're after some mobile game recommendos, well, then get set for a whole heap coming your way! Right now! First off, if you haven't already tried the Plants vs. Zombie games, then I would recommend those. There is another one on the way too, but it's been in soft launch phase for a while now, so I'm not sure when it will officially be out. If you fancy some beautiful puzzling, Monument Valley 1 and 2 are stunning and soothing, and just an all-round lovely time. For another tranquil, chilled-out experience, there's Sky Children of the Light from the creators of Journey. If you're keen on some team competition, there's Brawl Stars, which is a pretty sophisticated little multiplayer experience, especially considering it's a free mobile game. Or there's Geometry Dash, if you're in the mood for a challenging rhythm platformer. Oh, and let's not forget, Minecraft and Terraria can both be played on mobile devices. But hopefully there are at least some games in the mix there that you will enjoy, Rosa. Alright, moving on, we have time for one more video. And this one is from Liliana. Hi GGSP, I'm Liliana and today I have two questions for you. Number one, in Minecraft, how do I move a beehive without disturbing the bees inside? And number two, in Roblox Adopt Me, what is your favourite pet that you own? If you do not answer these, I'll fill your Adopt Me inventories with robins. Also, Darren, do these. <laughs> More emoticons! <clears throat> Don't worry, be happy! Do worry, be sad! Jeepers creepers! Minion! Thank you, bye! Thanks, Liliana! To answer your first question, I think we better consult our resident bee man, 
aka the D-Man, Darren. Greetings, Darren here. Hey Darren, just a Minecraft question for you. How do you move a beehive without destroying it? Oh, well, to do this, you'll need to use a tool with the silk touch enchantment. Unless you happen upon it in a chest or score it through trade with a villager, you could try to get it through an enchanting table. For this method, make sure you have plenty of lapis lazuli on hand and try enchanting things with other enchantments until eventually Silk Touch appears as an option. There's a bit of chance involved and you'll need a decent amount of experience points for this, so be prepared. But once you do manage to get the enchantment and apply it to, say, an axe, you can use it to move your beehive. Instead of destroying the hive, it will drop for you to collect. Any bees inside the hive should remain inside unharmed too. So that's how you move a beehive from where it is to where you want it to be. <laughs> oh, well, good to know about that element of beehivior. Hey, Darren, beehivior, behavior. Oh, you're welcome, Rad. Good bee. <laughs> good bee to you too, Darren. Now onto the question of my favourite pet in Roblox Adopt Me. Well, I must be honest, I haven't played a lot of Adopt Me, so I only really have two pets. There's my first pup named Peanut, whom I will always love and adore. And my more recent buddy, a Shiba Inu, who I like to call Mustard. I still think it's strange you can feed your dog a whole pizza in that game. You never catch me feeding boats pizza. Nothing but delicious cow hooves for my boy. Okay, take it. And I'm sorry, but I cannot choose between peanut and mustard. I love them both equally. But that's all the time we have for this special Ask SP. If you've got a question for us, go here and send it in. And if it's a video that gets used on the show, we'll send you some cool GGSP loot just as soon as we can. Hey, maybe I should feed myself a pizza. Well, that's another episode of GGSP done and dusted, but don't fret, because there is a whole heap of gaming goodness coming your way next week. Get the band together, because Wario is back in this frantic and funny party game, WarioWare Get It Together. Wow. And sit down with the fam and pass that controller, because we'll look at a bunch of games to get your grown-ups into gaming. But until then, stay safe, be nice, have fun, and keep gaming. Gem out. Red out.